This is Bo Sanders from the City of Angels, and you're listening to Doug Paget Radio. For more Doug Paget Radio fun, visit DougPaget.com. You know I love that organic cooking. I always ask for more. And they call me Mr. Natural. Kidding me. It's the wrong song. <laughs> it's the right song. It's gravelly too. Hey, welcome back to Duck Badger Radio. We're going to be in a conversation with Rob Ryersey. Rob is uh, the author of a, uh, of a little book. Uh, that he calls fundamorphosis. He's a fundamentalist who's metamorphosized, who's, who's metamorphized. Former fundamentalist. Who's, how do you say that word though? Metamorphized? When one has gone through the process of metamorphosis? Well, how does one, you and is, I are both in the habit of making up words, so I don't know well, that I we like could that trust idea. it. Yeah. Fundam- well, we're going to ask him. We're going to ask him what he, uh, how, how he, morphed. Um, he morphed. How he refers to that. So, so Rob has, has a new book out. Fundamorphous, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna ask him about the process of going from being a fundamentalist to not to being a fundamentalist. Being something else. How that uh, how that may help you? Hey Rob, this is Doug Paget in Victoria. Hi Rob. Hey, hi Doug. Hi Victoria. How are you? Hey, we're doing great. Thanks, Rob. We're just sitting here trying to figure out how um, how you pronounce the title of the book, though. Uh, Fundamorphous. Fundamorphosis. Fundamorphosis. See, I, I had this. I got. I got myself all in the sisisis thing at the end. And, and when someone has gone through a metamorphosis, what do they say? You've, you've metamorphized. You've, you've metamorphosed. How do you? <laughs> how, how does one? How does one pronounce that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Metamorphosized, maybe. Yeah. Right. I, I like morphed. I, I, well, yeah, I he's morphed. He's, he's, yeah. I mean, it sounds like he's a Smurf then, or yeah. something. <laughs> Rob, tell us the story. You grew up and uh, and functioned within Christianity as a um, from a, you know the stream I, of your of your family's of your family's liking and um, had uh, good positive experiences inside of of Christianity, and then went through a, a significant change that that put pressure on on you and the kind of churches you were going to pastor and what you were doing with your life and all, huh? Yeah, that's exactly right. I grew up in. Um in a uh, a brand of fundamentalism um, that uh, it was a, a, a denomination, uh, well, though they didn't like to use the word denomination, a fellowship of churches, uh, uh-huh. of Baptist churches, um, known as the, uh, the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches, the G-A-R-B-C, oh. um, which, it, which, you know, it's just Garp. when it got started in the, in the early 30s, you know, it, it makes me wonder if, like, there were no marketing executives around at the time who could have yeah. said, you know, the General Association of Regular Baptists is probably not the best name to go <laughs> it with. Sounds but, like you're choking the like GARP, they, like, the yeah. acronym or whatever. Yeah, GARB, GARB is what GARB. they call it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's that's what I grew up in, and uh, and actually, kind of, I I, be, I I went. You know, grew up in Christian schools and going to Christian camps and going to church and ended up going to a, a GRBC Bible college and uh, and ended up as a, a third generation garb pastor mm. and um, and and so for you know a long time kind of toted the line um, that was very um, very certain mm-hmm. about everything very, very confident in everything we believed. And no questioning it, and there was uh, a great amount of judgment towards anybody that that wasn't us. And uh, and I, I kind of went through a process that was it, it was kind of a slow build, um, being introduced to some different writers and different thinkers and some different ways of looking at things. And, and ultimately, it, it kind of climaxed with a sermon series I was going to preach through uh, the book of Genesis at, uh, at the church I was pastoring at the time. And I, and I realized that, like, the questions I had about Genesis uh, mm. and, and the things that, like, that no longer resonated with me about kind of the pat, easy answers that I had always... If I even raised those questions, yeah. let alone, mm-hmm. right. you know, proffered any kind of answer to those questions, if I even raised the questions, I would have been fired. Uh, and that, um, 
it, it, it really kind of sent me into kind of a, a, a dark place, a, a dark night of the soul. And, uh, and I was for a number of months, I kind of went through a, a, a spiritual and emotional and physical depression that, um, that when I eventually kind of came out the other side of, had this, sense, this realization that, you know what, I've, if, if I'm going to invest my life in this, uh, I, I've got to, I've got to pastor a different kind of church, uh, a church that is okay with doubt, okay with mystery, um, okay with not all of us having all the answers and, and a different kind of posture. And so we ended up, we ended up leaving and, uh, and starting a, a, a completely different kind of church. Now, now, Rob, one of the things I find interesting is that you, you write in the book that, um, that fundamentalists and, and your tribe that you grew up with didn't use fundamentalists as a negative or derogatory term, mm-hmm. right? Like you guys were proudly fundamentalists. No and that's yes. something that a lot of people yep. don't know in, in the Christian circles is that in the, especially in the 1910s and 20s and 30s and 40s, when fundamentalism in the United States was really um, uh, framing itself in a new way, the fundamentals, uh, the idea of a, of a religious person being a fundamentalist meant that they were going to hold to certain fundamental truths. And there was an identified list and then different groups, you know, would argue about what was on the list. But there was a a pretty uh, well agreed upon list of things that people would hold to in the midst of all the rest of cultural change and shifts and all these things going on. Right. And and so you write that that, hey, look, these people weren't bad folks. They weren't even bad spiritual people. They were simply um, uh, trying to be devout Christians in the way that made sense to them. Yes, exactly. In fact, have a great deal of respect for people like my grandfather, uh, who, in the midst of pretty profound theological changes that were happening in seminaries and churches in the early 1900s, who kind of stuck by their convictions, and many of them lost church buildings, and they lost congregations, and they, you know, they they lost relationships with people that they had they had known and loved over a long period of time and and it was the strength of their convictions that led them to that i have a a profound Mm. amount of respect for that what what ended up happening and what 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 happens and so often is that you know once those battles it was it was kind of the battle mentality that that was that once those initial battles were fought uh then fundamentalists started to turn, well, they turned first on evangelicals, those mm-hmm. who stayed in the denominations and tried to reform them, uh, and then they ultimately turned on each other, mm-hmm. and, and it, you know, it became this thing that unless you use the same Bible version I use, or unless right. you, you, mm-hmm. you know, believe the exact same thing about, about, you know, the timing of the rapture that I believe, then, right. and it, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it ultimately, it kind of, it just kept the separation kept happening over and over and over again until you're left with these very small, um, you know, very isolated, you know, kind of groups and, and organizations. Yeah. And I think one of the things that happened, I wasn't raised a fundamentalist or anything, so I don't, I don't have any family heritage in the, in the game, but I think that f- people who are fundamentalists in whatever area, fundamental, fundamentalist, religious people, especially fundamentalist Christians, th- I, it feels to me like they just made a commitment and a bet on the wrong set of things that were going to help them stay faithful. So the impulse was they wanted to be faithful and either because of um, maybe some deeply held bigotries or some fears they had or just having believed the wrong uh, formula, there became a belief that holding to these ideas or to this version of the Bible or to this understanding of, of Christian doctrine, that's going to accomplish the thing that every Christian I know wants to accomplish, which is to live a vital, useful Christian life that's good for God and good for other people. Like, everybody wants that kind of thing, um, but you really end up in trouble when you've when your system has some assumptions in it about what's going to make that happen. And um, people start to think, well, what if that system doesn't make that happen? That's when fundamentalism becomes a real problem, when there's no chance for change and there's no chance for development and growth and adaptation. And, and well, as you would call it, 
um, morphing or going through a transformation to another set of, uh, of beliefs or assumptions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, fundamentalism, whether it's whether it's Christian fundamentalism or in, in you know I've I've written a bit about how like a lot of people when they leave fundamental you know, Christian fundamentalism they just trade one fundamentalism for another. Yeah, you know they be yeah. <laughs> you know and so whatever the kind of fundamentalism it is, whether it's about you know eating organic food or voting a certain way or or doing this or doing that, whatever kind of fundamentalism it is, fundamentalism. It, it, is, is built on an idea of certitude, that we have all the answers, mm-hmm. that we know for certain that this is how things are and how things should be. Yeah, and you don't have to know, and this is the thing that I think you're bringing up, which is a good point. You don't have to know everything. You only have to know the essential things, <laughs> right? And then everything exactly. else yes, can be... With certainty. With, with certainty. So if you know those things for sure, then you don't have to worry about all the other things. So there becomes a hunt not only for certainty, but there's a hunt for certainty of the essentials, right? The <laughs> things that truly matter. Mm-hmm. And that's where it becomes really hard for some work. I'm sure someone like you who, would, who went through the, you know, your process of saying, but look, I think maybe science tells us something different. And well, look, those things just aren't what's most important. I'm sure mm-hmm. is the kind of response that you heard because that's what most people hear in those systems is, well, that might be, but that's not really what truly matters. What truly matters are these things that we hold in this particular way. Yeah, exactly. And and what what tends to happen is that certainty produces mm. legalism mm-hmm. in the sense that like if this is if these are the things that really matter and I know that with certainty, right. then I have to live yeah, this sure. way. Right. Mm-hmm. And that kind of makes and sense, doesn't what, it? Like of course you'd be a legalist. Yep, if you're a fundamentalist then, who's not a legalist, yep, and, what's the point? And we have right. To. And then what happens is that that legalism produces judgment of people who don't live the way that you are living. Yeah. And and that's where it, like that's where where it all broke down. I'm looking at this this whole system I was raised in and saying, wait a minute, this just doesn't this just doesn't feel like it's consistent with the gospel of grace that that we find in the story of Jesus. Mm. It just doesn't. It it's just not. It's not matching up. Oh, that's interesting. And what seems so heartbreaking about it for you and others who have gone through periods of doubting and then changing that in the process of that the because the community is set up in a way that can't accommodate or sustain itself with doubt or Mm. questions that then there's a ostracization that happens and so when you're in the period when you know most need support you ha- you find yourself without anyone, correct? Mm. Because your your community oh, per- shuts you out. Yeah, precisely. Like, and that's what when I when I was going through this crisis about preaching through Genesis, is I I, could, I didn't have anybody to talk to about yeah. it. Yeah. I I could not be authentic. I could not be myself. I could not express any of that, and and that and, and that's what ultimately led to me being so depressed. Uh, because I, I I was I was becoming the thing that you know growing up I hated the most, which was you know a hypocrite. I, you know, yeah. I was, mm-hmm. you know, so many, like we all like we all <laughs> we, we all hate hypocrites, and I realized I am one because I'm not being I'm not being true to myself. Mm-hmm. Huh. All right. So 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 you decided you were going to start. Uh, you were going to think new ways. You're going to start another church. Did that mean you lost your family? Like like where? What did your parents say about all this? Because I know a lot of people who. <laughs> You know, or just like, look, I, 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 I'm willing to change my, my thinking and my beliefs, but, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna insult my mom and my dad and my grandparents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, yeah. I don't wanna be an ass yeah, about I, it. I, I, yeah, uh, I, my, my grandfather died before I was born, and I, and I often mm-hmm. wonder, you know, what he must think of me. Uh, my yeah, parents, no. uh, my parents have been really interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they thought it was a phase that I would grow out of. And and oh. so when I too, you know, not long after we left, um, and and my mom said to me, she said, "Well, um, aren't you afraid that you know you're going to limit your ministry by having a tattoo?" And it was this idea mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. if you do this, you know, you, you you cut yourself off from where you came from, and you're not going to be able to go back. Mm-hmm. And 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 that was kind of her mindset. 
I mean, over the over the last few years, I mean, they don't. My parents, especially my mom, but but my dad too. Like they don't they don't agree with with a, you know a lot of particularly the the theological conclusions I've come to. Mm-hmm. But they've been on a personal level, they've been supportive, and you know they haven't they haven't shunned me. So you know uh, you know others in our in our former denomination have. I there was this. In, it, we grew up with this doctrine of separation. Oh, yeah. You separate from those that that are that are that are apostate and, and and heretics, and and I've been I've been separated from and and have lost friends and you know that's you know was part of the <laughs> part of you know kind of what you know what <laughs> what our journey ended up being. Oh, that's mm-hmm. nice. Okay, hey, hey, uh, you're you're listening to, to Rob Breyer. See, Rob, we're going to come back here in a second. Um, we're just going to do a little video break here, and uh, I want you to share with us what's going on in your book and um, the 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 kind of audience and the people that you think would find this helpful. Because I know there's many people who've gone through their own transitions and similar shifts from any community into a new one, and their spirituality that has gone along with that. So. Uh, we're going to just take a little break here and come back after the break and, and uh, share that. And uh, some of you may know that we asked the people making bumpers for the show uh, if they'd give us their favorite joke. And so um, uh, Bo Sanders put together his, uh, his favorite little joke about Baptists and Pentecostals. So, Rob, I thought this one would be a good, uh, a good interlude uh, bumper bit. So, so here's Bo 